Good morning. This is our uh, weekly message of encouragement to you. And the last uh, few weeks we've been talking about as we see all these signs of the Lord's return, uh, we should be living a focused life, focused on the Lord, focused on his word, tuned into the Holy Spirit. And we're going to conclude this series of messages today. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord, we, we ask you to let, not let us uh, be get out of focus or not let us become uh, in, where we're focused on everything else but you. We want to be watchful in these last days. We want to be looking for your return. And as we're looking, then we want, as at the same time, we want to be doing what you called us to do. So, our Lord, we pray now that you would speak to us today as we wrap up this message in Jesus' name. So, we want to keep our eyes on the Lord. That's number one. We've, we talked about um, praying, watching and praying, keep staying focused, watching and praying for the Lord's return. We, last week we talked about focus your heart, focus your heart on the things of God. And uh, today we want to talk about focusing your actions. And the, the simple physical truth is whatever your eyes are focused on, your feet are going to follow. So, but that, that's not just a physical truth, it's a spiritual truth. If your eyes are fixed on the Lord, you're going to follow Him. You're not going to be led astray. You're not going to be after uh, pursuing the things of this world. You're going to be pursuing the things of God. So we know this is true physically and spiritually. We have to keep our eyes focused on what is right for us. Keep our eyes focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Hebrews chapter 12, this is exactly what it's talking about. The first couple of verses here. It says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So this is, this is important. We're, he uses the example here of an athlete. An athlete that, that's running a race is not looking to the left or the right, not turning around and looking behind him, but keeping his eyes set on the finish line. And then verse 2 says, Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one who began. Uh, he called us. He chose us. He called us into this walk of faith. And he will see it through to the finish as we keep our eyes on him. Who for joy that was for the for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Think, keep in mind everything that he went through just so you could have eternal life. And now all he asks is that we run the race, that we finish the race, keep our eyes on him and finish the race. Resist the temptation. Uh, looking to Jesus, as we're looking to Jesus, we're better able to resist the temptation. And, and not to look to human leaders, uh, only Jesus. Human leaders cannot lead you in the right way. They cannot take care of all your need. Jesus is our provider. He will provide everything we have need of. One of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh. Uh, the Lord will provide. Keep looking to Jesus while also being aware of the tricks and lies of the enemy. Our adversary, the devil, he's, he's roaming about trying to see who can deceive. Um, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning with verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. Him, for he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Res resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are, are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So uh, all around the world, saints of God are being tested, tempted, and are suffering. They're going through persecution. 
just like you are in some cases even much worse. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. So keep in mind, our adversary, the enemy, is roaming around about like a roaring lion, looking whom he may devour. Well, if your eyes are on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not uh, looking to sin, you're not looking to pleasures of this world, then you're not going to be devoured by the adversary. He can only devour those who are yielding to sin, who are going his way. So we need not fear the devil, but look fully to the victorious one, the Lord Jesus Christ, who lives in us by his spirit, and by his spirit he helps us and gives us power to overcome. Now let's look at First um, John. This is First uh, John 4 and beginning with verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. You're an overcomer just because you have Christ in you who is greater than he that is in the world. They are of the world and they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He, knows God, he, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know that the spirit of we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. As we know the Lord and we keep our eyes on the Lord and his word, we will be able to discern discern between truth and error. Stay focused on Jesus, turning ourselves to his spirit, tuning, turning, turn, turning to the Holy Spirit and tuning into the Holy Spirit and to the word of God. We want our prayers and our actions to be directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we want we want to stay focused on the Lord. We want to be tuned into the Holy Spirit. We want to have a knowledge of the Word of God so that our actions will follow where our thoughts, where our vision and our thoughts are. We want to we want our prayers and our actions to be directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit alone, not by our own strength but by the Spirit of God. And then in um, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, let's go to verses um, 17 and 18. It says, and take up, this is talking about the whole armor of God. It says, and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So we are not empowered to really get, engage in, paddle, in battle and be victorious unless we pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We have to pick up the sword. You've got to pick up your Bible and read it, and then apply it to spiritual warfare. And it says praying, praying. Not only pick up the sword of the Spirit, but prayer. We have to pray, pray, pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Our prayer life has to be strong, focused, and continual. We've got to pray with perseverance. You, you pray, 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 and you look for the answer. If the answer doesn't come, you continue to pray. As we look fully to Jesus, remain focused on who, who is, He who is the author and finisher of our faith. We've got to stay focused on the one who, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one who called you. He's the one who led you. He's the one who empowers you. And he's the one who's going to come back for you. And your faith will be complete when you stand before him in glory forever and ever. We stay focused on Jesus and our lives and our prayers will be far more effective. We will our, And our steps, our actions will be effective. We will bring glory to our Savior. We'll accomplish God's will. We'll release the life and the power of the Spirit. And we'll see salvation and blessing come to those who we reach out to and those who we're serving. We'll see salvation and blessing come to them in Jesus' name. So it's all about keeping our eyes focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word 
and then our steps are going to follow. So we want our, our actions to be focused in God's way. We want to be doing it God's way. We want to be following Jesus. We want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Look at the life of Jesus and do, not only say what Jesus said, but do what Jesus did. Our actions focused and following Jesus. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord, we come to you today and we thank you uh, that we're in the last days. Everything that we see around us, it, it's exactly the way you promised. These signs would, would be the, the signs of your coming. So we know you're coming soon. And Lord, we want to be focused on you and focused on your word and watchful. Watching, not watching what everything bad, bad things are going on in the world, but being watchful for your return. I pray for that one that's listening today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Sometimes when we talk about the Lord's return, it's terrifying to those that don't don't know Jesus. Today you can surrender. You can give your life to Jesus. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Would you pray that prayer? I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I know that you were buried in that tomb and on the third day you rose again to give me eternal life. I pray for the church that we would take our eyes off the world. The church is becoming more worldly instead of the world becoming more Christian. I pray that the church would take their eyes off the world and be focused on you, Lord Jesus, that we would not only speak your words, but we would walk the way that you walk. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Listen next week for another powerful message to encourage you in these last days. God bless.